Good evening YouTube, thanks for tuning in to another video. What I'm going to be showing you today is how to install a new hard drive into your PC. Same applies for a laptop, but obviously there are differences that uh, are going to be very difficult to demonstrate, such as uh, how to open the laptop case. Generally laptops are a little bit more fiddly to open, depending on the size as well. Some of them may not even be able to be upgraded. And more recent laptops uh, will probably be fitted with a different type of SSD, such as an M.2 uh, drive, which are a lot smaller. They're, they're slim, long drives, which are capable of a lot faster speeds than something like this. Um, so this here is a four terabyte SSD that I picked up off of uh, Amazon from the Black Friday drills. Got a good price on it. I think pound per gigabyte, it worked out really, really well. This was just under 300 pounds. Uh, it is a large size, four terabyte disk, and I had uh, a little bit of uh, room left on one of my drives that was nearly full up. So I thought I'd take the opportunity and upgrade. And I will share the experience of how to install a new drive into your computer with you. Again, I apologize. It's going to be very difficult for me to show you how this uh, upgrade process works on any single PC because every PC is built differently. Cases are, chassis are always different fixtures and fittings are different but the sort of basic concepts that you need to understand when choosing a drive and upgrading a drive are always going to be the same so one thing that's important to note on this drive is uh, the actual thickness of the drive so this shows you and you'll you'll see the specifications when you're searching for a drive online this is seven millimeters thick why is that important it's important because especially if you're fitting drives in laptops generally space is quite confined and you're not necessarily going to have unlimited amounts of space to squeeze a drive in. Um, and therefore, a drive such as a 7 millimeter drive, which is, I think, the thinnest thinnest drive, I don't think you'll get thinner than that. Maybe you will for some smaller sizes, but 7 millimeter is generally considered a very slim drive um, for uh, this sort of a drive for a uh, three and a half, uh, sorry, two and a half inch uh, SSD. So we're going to quickly go ahead and open this up. Uh, I've got my trusty knife here, right? Let's quickly open that up nice and safe whilst we're doing it. Make sure I don't cut myself open as well. And let's get the drive out and just have a quick inspection of the drive before we start installing. So um, they've given a nice label there saying remove before installing. So we will go ahead and remove that. Let's just take a look at the unit itself. There's the unit. So four terabyte uh, 3D NAND. So there's different, various different technologies of um, flash. And when you're looking at drives, you'll notice there's drives that look like they're very, very cheap. And you generally might ask yourself, well, why don't I just buy a cheaper one? Um, it's the quality of the actual flash storage. Generally, the drives that are using the better quality memory, so uh, TLC and 3D NAND and all that sort of stuff, um, are going to give you a longer lifetime flash memory uh, is not like the old tape drives that would last forever and ever, um, even though they deteriorated eventually. Flash memory can deteriorate a lot quicker and you are at risk of losing data if you're not upgrading uh, quickly. So, that's uh, right, if, if, you're not, um, if, you, if you're not choosing uh, really good quality memory, you need to be very careful with that. So, I removed the sticker and it's exposed the connector. So obviously when the sticker was on, the connectors were still exposed on the ends, but ideally you want the, the front side exposed as well because the connectors are going to be coming here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to flip this piece, my PC. It's got few, it's got three of these drives in it at the moment, not four terabyte disks. They're crucial disks and they're of different sizes. There's a one terabyte SSD in here. There's a two terabyte SSD in here. And there's a 500 gig SSD in there. They're all they're all secondary drives. They're not primary OS sort of disks. My operating system is stored on a PCIe NVMe uh, drive, which is actually connected at the back. So if I just quickly show you, so when you're opening up your PC, um, your case might be of the type that has screws. So you've got to unscrew um, the case before you can actually remove the cover. And some being like this one will be where you can actually just pop the cover off just like that. And you might have a little bit of dust in there if you haven't been cleaning it out. But this here is an M.2 NVMe drive. So generally, as I was trying to describe, they're small, they're thin and long. This particular model, the WD Black SN750, has got a heat sink on top, so it's nice and chunky, but it helps with getting the heat off that drive as quickly as possible. 
So I'm just going to go and leave that open. I don't need to close that right now. If I go and spin this to the front, you'll see the actual patient is here. So there are two drives that are actually stacked on top of each other. And this front one here is the two terabyte drive, which I bought. Um, I actually bought this on Prime Day deals. So this wasn't, uh, it's not a very old drive. It's a few months old. This is going to remain, but we will need to remove it to get to the drive behind it. So just before I go and remove the drive, um, one thing to look at here is the actual, uh, if I just expose this up a bit so you can see the connectors, the connectors here. So these are the two connectors you'll typically see on these drives. You'll see a power connector which is the larger one. So the SATA power connectors look like that. Um, and they've got four cables generally coming out the bottom of it. You've got your red, yellow, and two blacks, which are grounds. And then you'll have the actual data cable, which connects to the motherboard. So power cable generally going to your power supply um, and your actual data cable, which is the SATA cable going to your motherboard. So head on the motherboard, and that's what the SATA cable looks like. So it's the smaller. Just those two cables you remove those two cables and you're ready to start removing your drives so i'm going to go ahead and remove uh, that one and also the connector for the drive behind it and the drive behind it is the one that's being replaced so whilst i'm removing these uh, other things to consider when you're uh, upgrading your storage obviously make sure that the drive is going to fit make sure that your motherboard um, whether it's a laptop or PC, uh, is compatible with this sort of a drive. Generally, newer motherboards, um, what you'll have is you'll have uh, SATA ports on there. They look like that, or, or the uh, the other side of that. So this is the female. Uh, you'll have the male port on the motherboard. And they, um, they're generally six gigabits per second SATA ports. So what that means is you're probably, you're going to get six gigabits of data throughput maximum you're probably going to be pushed to find a drive, a SATA drive like this, two and a half inch disks that can perform at 600 megabytes per second, which roughly is what six gigabits equates to um, without making the math too complicated. Um, and you will actually uh, generally find drives that perform roughly like this. Uh, this is generally considered good performance. So what you're getting here is up to, up to, it's not going to be exactly up to 560 megabytes per second read. And you're looking at about 530 megabytes per second write. Write is generally always more intensive, so it will always be a little bit slower. Um, and so uh, there you go. That first drive is out. We just need to get the second drive out now. Make sure you've got a nice screwdriver ready to go. You generally need a size of uh, a PH1 or PH2. Um, and this particular screwdriver I bought off Amazon, it's a Stanley screwdriver, very handy. It closes up like a little pen, just like that. Nice to have in your top drawer if you ever need to do a little bit of maintenance on your computer or laptop. And it has, uh, it's double-sided, so it's got small, it's got smaller and larger Phillips and flathead bits um, ready to go. So you can just switch them around as you wish. So that one as well, that's a larger flat and larger Phillips. Make sure you've got a good screwdriver. It doesn't have to be the best screwdriver in the world, but something that uh, is the right size so you don't start ripping up your screws when you're removing them. Right, so now we've got the uh, drive out. What we're going to do next is we're going to, uh, we've got the first drive, we're going to get the second drive out. So as I said, I've got two drives in here that are stacked up on top of each other, and I need to get them out. So I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew uh, and get the second drive out as well. And this is going to be a bit of a process. So I'm going to just pause the video while I do this so you don't have to watch me unscrew the whole thing because I need to remove I need to remove uh, this panel here as well and get the whole drive off. And once that's done, then I'll go ahead and resume the video so you can see me actually connecting um, the new driving. So I'm just going to pause the video now and I'll be right back. Just whilst I'm unscrewing the drive, uh, I'm not all the way there yet. So I've taken the drives off. As you can see, they're completely removed. This is the panel that the actual second drive was attached to. Just wanted to point out something while I before I attach the drive. So one thing you will note on these SSDs is they have various mounting positions. They have holes on the face and they have holes on the sides, depending on your enclosure um, and uh, your maybe the type of device. You might find that you're using one hole or the other. It doesn't matter which one you use. So just go with the flow, whichever one. Um, it look, looks like you need to put a hole into, uh, put a screw into, sorry, you go and put a screw into that one 
it doesn't you don't have to just use one specific set you can use you can use both if you want if you've got a plate that's screwing at the face and also at the sides go ahead and secure the drive on both sides um so i thought i'd just point that out before i go and fix the drive i'm going to pause the video again and i'll be right back once the drive is attached back to the case again right i'm back so as you can see front panels back on both drives are back stacked up together two terabyte at the front i left the four terabyte at the back that's the new one the reason why is there's less chance of me having to upgrade that one again because the smaller ones will generally get replaced first so i've left a two terabyte at the front again another th things to consider when you're when you're trying to decide where to put your drives in your in your case and stuff right is uh, making sure that you don't make life difficult when you get to that next upgrade so obviously i had i had done that i had the 500 gig at the back and for that reason i had to remove both drives where if that 500 gig was at front i would just have to remove that one drive and replace it so things like this uh, are worth thinking about once you've done once you've done the drive swap um, easiest bit is just getting the cables back in so because i can't see the cable i'm just going to get my head around the side and see if i can get it in uh, but it literally is a matter of just pushing cables back in exactly where you pull them out. Um, you can't really do this wrong, so don't get too stressed about it. The cables can only go in one way. Uh, they cannot go in the wrong way at all. As you can see, they're L-shaped. They're not completely flat, so they will not push in the wrong way into the drive at all. Uh, so you're not going to be doing much damage, right? Don't, don't, be, don't be stressed about that at all. And it's as simple as that. That is the drive, new drive installed, ready to go. What I'm going to show you next is we're going to go and power this on, show you how to find the drive in your device manager, in your disk management tool, and actually uh, initialize it so you can actually start using the drive and copying data to it. So I'm going to be right back. Welcome back, everybody. So we've got the PC connected up after installing the new drive. And what you're seeing here is the file explorer. So one thing you'll notice is there is no four terabyte drive here, though the drive you saw that I was installing was a four terabyte drive. The reason why is when you first install a PC into it uh, or a new drive into a PC or a laptop, um, it needs to be initialized, so formatted before initial use and assigned a drive letter so that you can actually see it in your uh, in your file explorer or in your my computer or whatever you're used to calling it right so we're just going to go ahead and minimize that for a second what you'd want to do is if you're on windows 10 if you right click uh, the start menu you'll get this administrative sort of menu up and if you click on disk management you'll get straight into a disk management utility which is a very handy shortcut to have on windows and straight away what you'll notice is the first thing it's asking me is do I want to initialize the new disk? I'm just going to cancel from that for a second just to show you how to get to this menu if you're in an older version of Windows. So Windows 7, what you traditionally want to find is you're not going to have this menu. You're not going to have the right click on the start menu. Is You would want to go into control panel and you're ultimately looking for something called computer management. And I'll show you how you'll find that. So if you go and launch control panel, this is pretty much the same sort of view as you'd get in Windows 7. And from this view, you would look for administrative tools. Once you click on administrative tools, you'll get a list of administrative tools that you can launch. And from here, you can launch something called computer management. Once you launch computer management, you'll get to a disk management utility. Um, it's much the same as that. And again, as you can see, the first thing it's asking me to do is to initialize the disk, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, yes, I want to initialize it. Two different types of uh, partition tables. GPT is a more uh, new format of partition tables, which is probably the one you should be choosing. MBR, master boot record, are the old style um, partition tables. I would recommend if you have the option to go with uh, the new version, uh, albeit there is a caveat and it does tell you that note that GPT partition style is not recognized by all previous versions of Windows. It probably is uh, available in some uh, Linux distributions. You're not going to have a problem with that. But just bear that in mind if you think you're going to be sticking this drive into a maybe you've got it connected to an external caddy and you're going to be transferring it portably between windows 10 and older versions of windows then i would recommend that you uh, probably go ahead and choose mbr 
So let's go ahead and select GPT and I'm just going to click on OK and it's gone it's gone ahead and it's done its in its first part of initialization. You can see the drive there, three two three seven two six point zero one gigabytes. You're not gonna always get all the space that's a, that that you would expect to see on the drives because uh, the disk or the system itself needs somewhere to store file allocation tables and the inodes which ultimately get used to index and store uh, all, this, all the sort of uh, items that you're storing on the drive, so files and folders, they all need to be indexed and, and, and that takes up space. So generally the larger the drive, because it's a percentage that gets taken off for the inodes and file allocation tables, um, you will generally lose more and more space the bigger the drive is. So once you've got the actual drive ready to go, what you are ready to do is create a partition on it. Now I'm going to create a full 4 terabyte partition. So you can create a new simple volume and you click on next and in this case you can allocate as much or as little space as you like. There will be a limit of how small it can probably be but uh, or mind you it tells you there minimum this size uh, is can be 8 so there you go. Um, 8 megabytes it wouldn't be a really useful partition to have but there you go. So we're going to go ahead and give it the full whack so we can have one nice big large volume to use um, and then at this point you can assign it a drive letter. So if I just quickly come back to my PC for a second, you can see um, I've got a C drive, I've got a D drive, and I've got an F drive. The space in between indeed was E, and that was the letter of the drive that I have just removed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose E because I want it to remain uh, as uh, exactly as it was on the previous drive. Now one, one point to note is obviously before you're removing an old drive from your PC, there's two reasons why you might be doing it. One is because it's failed and you know it's no longer working, so you're replacing it. Or another reason, such as for myself, is that the drive was filling up and you needed more space. So in this case, you would want to transfer all of the stuff off to another drive first before you replace the drive. So just something to bear in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and select E drive because that's the drive that I want. I'm going to give it a label um, in my to keep consistency with the other drive letters I'm going to call it int for internal and then 4TB so I can identify quite easily that it's a 4 terabyte disk and I'm going to go ahead and do a quick format if I untick that it will try and do a full format on the disk which will take forever I don't really need to do a full format on a brand new disk quick format is going to be sufficient and click finish and it started to format the disk and within a few seconds the drive is ready so as you can see now if I go to my computer I can see the E drive there, 4 terabytes, the new drive is initialized, it's ready to use, it's ready for me to start copying files onto. Really, really hope that you found this useful. Um, if you've got any comments or questions or queries that you want to ask about, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Um, as always, if you like the video, please do leave a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. It really does help and motivate me to make more and more videos for yourselves. And if there's any feedback or criticism you have that you can offer that helps me make my videos better, please feel free to also leave those in the comment section below. And I will be reading all the comments that are posted to try and make my videos better for you. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and all the best. Bye bye.